So I realized this has been just a really boring week of wrestling. Like, the, um, guys, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I I really didn't have much to talk about this week in wrestling. But um, apparently there were. Oh wait a minute, there has been a lot. Hey, 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 hey. I got M2 Wink here. And I got uh, a homework Mike with us. What's going on, fam? How we doing? How we doing? Mike, have you guys been formally introduced? No, this is the first time. Uh -oh. Mike, How you doing, Mr. Mike? Yeah. How you doing? Two constituents good, of two constituents of the uh of the Turnbuckle Tabloid podcast who are formally being introduced. And um I was just saying that there really wasn't much that happened in this week's wrestling. So I was like, well, what can we go in? Uh, do it. But uh, <laughs> um, I'm going to go into a just quickly, just a wrestling rundown for a ticket. And then we'll go into a, a, a overview of what happened in Survivor Series. But before I go into all that, uh, I'll go into to, to our boy M2. Has the landscape changed? Maybe just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Very optimistic, I see. Oh, highly, highly. If if the landscape hasn't changed, I, I don't think we would saw what we saw. Mm, Mike, uh, your thoughts about maybe is there a ripple going on? Is there a different door that's being forbiddenly open this day? Um, I, I just, I take it as we, we saw an inadvertent trade between two companies that are fighting each other. One Hall of Famer for a future one, so I don't know. Hmm. It's been hmm. If you think about it, the last two months, it's like, like one company got rid of one legend, and then they got somebody back that hasn't been there for over a decade, and now that other company is just. I, don't know, I sent you the picture where like CM Punk is looking around, and and he goes, "Oh wait, there's people on the hard cam side." <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my god, there's people over there. <laughs> you can actually, look left. So. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll, we'll we'll get to that in a sec. So um, just a quick uh, hey, I'm the Norm McDonald segment. We're doing wrestling rundowns weekend update. So we got um uh the story that Ray's gonna be out for the rest of the year. Most likely he'll be, probably be bouncing back during um Royal Rumble season. How's the LWO? Uh, storyline going all, uh, across the board. Um, um, M2, what's your thoughts about it right now? You know, I'm tired of friendly storylines. Thank you, AEW. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I'm tired of stuff about friendship. Santos Escobar going crazy ex-fiance is insane. <laughs> but Hey, we got a good match with the Dra with Dragon Lee, so I'll take it. Well, Mike, what's your thoughts about um, how they're bringing in Carlito at this time? Like I said, like we were doing predictions. If it felt underwhelming when Carlito came in, like I mean, the time to bring him in was around back last time, but then we waited through the whole summer, and now he's finally here, and he's now just like the veteran on the roster who who's now just. I quote unquote instigating the whole thing, so I don't know. Like right now, like we have a baby face Carlito, but I think at the end of the day, he's gonna turn heel. But I don't think it's gonna be for this storyline. So we'll have to wait and see. I just feel bad for at least because once like they bring up Angel and Humberto to the line with Santos, like Cruz and Joaquin Wild are fucked. They're gonna be on like on the chopping block list. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny that. I don't believe that there probably will be just um uh regular tax team like a regular tag team that flows across the 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 rosters that I can see that now that since there's going to be this um Evan flow of NXT 
Raw, SmackDown kind of talent. I think that they'll be okay. I think that that they'll be all right. Uh, Joaquin is a vet, so it's like, yeah, he's like, uh, as long as I'm getting money, I'm good. <laughs> like he's he's yeah. cool with that. Can I can I just say, Raul Mendoza had has a chance to be one of the top Mexican baby faces by him. He can, I'm, yeah, definitely, I'm yeah, just saying. yeah, he can. Roman since NXT, you know, since or Somos Latino, yeah, I was there. Right. I thought Santos Esco- I'm not Santos. I thought Raul actually had a chance to be one of the top baby faces, but they just kept making him lose and they made him a flunky. Like, that guy's what- that guy's been there for the for the longest time. You even back to like when Triple H was running NXT, like this guy has been like has been uh, there for at least like almost a decade now at this point. Yeah, yeah, and he's not bad in the I'm not sure I'm not so sure about like my skills wise or like the English to Spanish barrier, but in ring wise Santo, no, I keep saying Santos. Raul Mendoza is not that bad. Nah, Joaquin went good. from I said, well, well, he went DJ Z and all that. He he he's been through it, so he's like, I'm making six figures right now. I'm good. Like my family is fed. I don't need to do much. I I'm okay. And he's he's a talent. He's a guy that I could see. Later on down the line, that could be probably a backstage guy. He's already been sharp enough to make that. So, it you know, and I I always tell um, wrestling fans in different groups and even guys that are on the on the outside don't you don't have to be championship tier guy to have a career. You're good with what you got. You know, it's. It's it's okay to be a mid level guy or or people that's on the spectrum. You're good, you know. We've seen careers last longer outside of the ring if you know how to manage it. So it, it, it's fine. Um, another story. What 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 can we talk about with the MLW issues? Uh, um, M two like how. <laughs> They had the bag. They had the bag. (laughs) MLW, like you guys, like you you had um the possibility of making stars. You could have been the breeding ground to (laughs) bring people up. You could have possibly been WWE's um um uh, um developmental, but now um Hammerstone is ready to be. Ghost. He's 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 calling that, his shot to be out, and that um, is not a name to lose. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and, they lost him, and, and they lost him to what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So um, I mean, remember, who would stay? Who would stay there? Well, yeah. Well, well, well. Well, now they're using it as a storyline, which which is even funnier. It's, this, this is one of those like. Uh, you, this is like where it used to be like where you laugh at TNA go ha ha like lol TNA this is what the fuck MLW like you, you do this whole thing where the guy wants out of the company and then you do a storyline where he joins the rival promotion and the initials are WTF <laughs> yeah like, what are you doing and then we hear from outside talent that they're they're Told they're under contract, then you find out that they're not under contract. Not, dude, that story would have been so as a wrestler, we would have to fight. We would have. <laughs> what do you mean? I have been trying to leave this company for how long? You told me I have my job. You go look at the paperwork, and I'm not uh, I'm not even an employee here. Especially the 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 the, the contract is not written in your language. So it's like Zoom in on the oh, rest now, now you're taking advantage of me. <laughs> exactly. Like, this, is, this, is, this is the perfect moment where you zoom in on the wrestler's face and go, da, 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 da. <laughs> like or, seriously, or or it's that dog that they have that now that's the meme that he he's looking around like, what the fuck? Like, why am I still here? Like, what the fuck is happening? Um, <laughs> and I, and I'm mad because I had so much hope for MLW to be that underdog kind of promotion. But right now, it just looks as though it's like you're 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 just a fucking indie fed that with has 
might have some kind of money. It's it's ridiculous. Right so, now they're worse. Right now they're worse of the NWA, and, that, and that's a very low scale. That's a loof. Oof, oof, oof. That, um, but that's not that's not a lie though, because yeah, they they messed up bad. The, uh, the, the, the the story in the Coke in public. They're doing it behind bars. <laughs> Yeah, that, Next that up. was wild. Next up, um, Ronda Rousey and ROH. Uh, Mike, Wait, what, what the what? fuck? When did that? When did that happen? <laughs> not on a random Ring of Honor show for sure. Not not the, not there. Yeah, the day before the big pay per view and unannounced too. Contractually, she's not there. Contractually, she's there for the angle with Athena and such. But yeah, this um, was this, this was a one-off. Apparently, she did a favor for her, her best friend Marina Shafir. But she just wanted to do a play with Marina. That was it. Please tell me you guys saw the clip of the fans chanting, "We want Ronda." No, we don't. We want Ronda. <laughs> no, we don't. no, we don't. <laughs> Meanwhile, she's in the fucking ring. <laughs> Which one was louder? The, the the other side. No, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> Me, meanwhile, Ronda's in, like high five of children in the front row. Way to go, <laughs> um, Mike. Be, before um, there's a there's a there's a um a story that I'm gonna go to ahead of time. But can you okay. um look it up quick? Um, the PWI tag team list. Uh, see, can you look that up quick? Yeah, more lists to go through. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, I, I know FTR is number one. I'll yeah. Say that I, um. Just uh. Just quickly. Uh. Sonny has been sentenced to seventeen years. So long and f- and goodbye. About bitch. time. It, I'm <laughs> sorry. You cannot learn your lesson for so long. <laughs> I mean, holy. Eventually, somebody was going to get hurt, and somebody did, unfortunately. And now the bitch has to pay. Seventeen years. Not well. Enough. Damn! Not enough. Thanks for coming. Well, it's you will know what black men go through when they have to have weed in their possession. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> or they're just residing in the left lane, but we're not going to talk about that. Uh, oh, you know, we'll 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 stay off that that <laughs> lane. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna do an introspect on that one day. <laughs> I'm gonna leave that one alone. Uh, <laughs> This is, just also, this is just show that how fucked up our country has been that this woman kept getting her license back or they just put that she got behind the wheel so many times and, and now it, and when something and unfortunate happens happen. now yeah. and it took her to kill an 85 year old man to get fucking 17 years she killed someone who should have been dead maybe 10 years prior for her to get 85 years now. And, the, and the sad thing is just some, yeah, 17 this, years there's some dipshit Sonny defenders going, but he was, his life was almost over. She put him out of his misery. That's fuck <laughs> off. <laughs> like she was like like the guy was a two legged chihuahua with like HIV. Like come on, fucker, fucker had a fucker had a peg leg and an eye patch. She he, he was struggling to live. She said, "Okay." <laughs> Fuck off. And, oh my god. In a rear ending I know incident. You are, man. Jesus. How the fuck you kill somebody on a rear ending incident? Jesus. That had you to be only sunny. One hell yeah. of a ram. Only sunny. Uh QT Marshall leaving AEW. Like, what the fuck? Uh, M2 Inc. My guy. Is this a plus or a minus for the company? It's a neither because QT means nothing. QVT means nothing. What has QT done since AEW has started? Those boring ass, that boring ass, long ass feud with Cody. Uh, and then just dragging down poor powerhouse. His hair plugs made it a plus, though. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The hair plugs were <laughs> over. Yeah. It's hair plugs. <laughs> this is this is I, where I go. This is where I go look up photos and go. Wait a minute, what? <laughs> I, I'm more. I'm, I, 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 I'm, I that's did. the least. That's the least thing I always look at. But as far as like fucking QT leaving AEW, that's probably like the last remnants of Cody Rhodes and AEW. But let's be real here. That was that was a Cody hire. 
Right. Yep. And and they kept him there for the longest time. And I, I haven't seen a lot of his stuff in AAA, but he seems to be over over there. He has one of their fucking belts. But I will say I give the guy credit for at least trying to do stuff stuff on TV, like the QTV stuff. I thought that was probably the most over in that company. And for him, it was the QTV stuff. I thought it was it was yeah. it was a niche goofy thing. I mean, the the shit where he had like like a like hundred people standing behind him and called the factory like that didn't work. But when he had like a hot woman like Holly Cameron and one of his and w- only one of his factory students, it worked. And, and, no, and it was a takeoff I, of um, the TMZ. I thought yeah, the TMZ. Q- I thought the QTV thought it it was, worked. I thought it was GTV. Well, no, it's, no, it's supposed to be a spinoff of TMZ because they were like, yeah, they, it was the segments be, they would yeah. sit there and talk about stories. Like they talked about the Wardwell thing where his passport got stolen. Right, and I thought yeah. it would, I thought it would work best, in like the way that they would do it, like if it was a a a a, a gimmick or a goof on the show itself, it would make sense to where that wrestlers would want to fight the, uh. The, the reporters, quote unquote, which would be cool. But um, when you put Powerhouse Hobbs in that circle, yeah, that actually, didn't work. Yeah, you're burying him. It's it's more it's, it's, it's more comedic. It'd be more <laughs> funnier if you but like, I I would have probably put um Denhausen or some shit in that kind of like mix or something like that. Because it's it's goofy. Oh um, no, 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 no. That's a wrestler. We need to watch him in matches. <laughs> <laughs> like the fuck? Wow. I mean not for nothing. Isn't QT a wrestler? Why wasn't like oh, like he, like, he wasn't even the focus. Meanwhile, the fucking things called after him. And, and, and who they bring in? They brought in John, John, Johnny TV. No, but you know what? Honestly, what the? Why the fuck what am the I? Fuck I what is Morrison doing? No, but honestly, I why am I about him? Yeah, he's being am, wasted right now. Why am I? The why am I even reporting this? Because the funniest thing for me to even say about this is that QT Marshall. Ask for his release. It's like this is a job that you might have oh, wanted. Oh, where oh, else, the, can, where can else the are bug, you gonna go? Can where else bus, are you gonna go? Where are like, you gonna go? Finally, finally, you want out of here. Goodbye. They couldn't wait to get rid of him. Uh, uh, the, 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 I'm sorry. The thought process right now is the possibility because of him and Cody's relationship with a <laughs> he's going to factory, NXT. But, yeah, I'm about to, he's uh, going straight to NXT. He about to go. Be, he's, he go out to work over there. He's a 40 year old guy with. Well, um, eh. I don't. Know, I don't know. Maybe TNA will bring him in. Like they always bring in people, experienced people, and so yeah, might as maybe well. for that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Um, MJF injured. How does this affect the uh, upcoming? Uh, World's mm. end pay per view. M2 Wink, what you got? Oh, oh, because MJF was already getting watered down with his horrible face turn. But, oh, now uh, is it going to be on Swerve to hold it down now? Um, I mean, I mean, he should be the next person to hold it. But with the current booking, uh, I mean, I would keep him off TV. I would do a thing where he has to relinquish the Ring of Honor tag belts and has no. Look- he says he, he says that he's gonna um wrestle at World's End against some more Joe. He no, says no, he's but, gonna do. Well, well, let me finish. I let him wrestle at World's End, but let him get killed by Joe, and then do the whole devil reveal. Just and then let MGF go off for a couple of months and get healed. But I think like, like, like don't don't let the man wrestle until the until the pay per view. Does he drop the belt to Joe? Yes. Yes. Let, yes. Joe, let Joe have a run for a couple of months. Fuck it. Please. Now, now maybe, if that maybe occurs... Maybe forget about this love triangle. Okay, so let's think about it like this. If that occurs, is that a big F you to WWE that Joe gets the title? No, it's a bigger, uh, F, it's a bigger F you to TNA. Pretty much. Hmm. Because Joe hasn't been world champion since 2008. Okay. Holy uh, shit. <laughs> and, and then, is it a big F you to um, 
what's the possibility for uh, the progression from here on out with MJF and the possibility of him staying or leaving with uh, uh, AEW? See, I don't exactly know. The door is uh, weird. Well, because we because with MJF, I think he's already signed. And I don't Agreed. think and I don't think he I don't think he wants to leave. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. And and the reason and I I, I was gonna do a cutting a promo <laughs> about this, but I don't think he doesn't want to leave because I think he's scared of leaving. I think he's I think he's afraid. Wait, hold on, Mike. You think he's scared? I think he's scared of leaving because he doesn't have the flexibility that he has in AEW. And I'm not mad at him with that because if you can milk the boss for what he has to give you right now, I would totally take it. He has the flexibility to do whatever the fuck he wants. Now that punk is is not there anymore. <laughs> um I wouldn't be um mad at him to stay there. Uh he's clearly in WWE, the top five. Yeah, but WWE has basically uh a firm grasp of their roster, uh, their, their their roster right now. So I think they're 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 okay with what's going on. MJF coming in, I think right now with um, what AEW is doing with him, it's a show and prove to say that um, he's not ready right now and. We need to see more of talent and ring wise. He's been showing his ass, like he's been doing yeah. great shit. Ring wise, he's been doing great shit. Mike Rye, or um, uh, microphone wise, he's good money, but he's still young. And yeah. WWE could probably grab him in the next three or four years to, yeah, to yeah, do exactly. it. Yeah, exactly. So that's what um, I was gonna say. I was gonna say, like, I wouldn't say he's scared, but I think he's more, uh, he's more no, aware. Of, of, he, I, no, he's no, more, no, he's no, no, he's scared. Mike, he's scared. He is scared because he can't okay. conform to that, um, that 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 prototype that WWE has. So he's good right now, and he could get good money to where he's at right now. So it's okay. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna say it like this: Babyface MJF. Is not ready for WWE. Heel MJF will draw them some money. You yeah. think so? Yeah, yes. but it, yeah, but it have to be toned down though. Like a lot of it, a lot of the stuff that he mentions every week, like like the verbiage, and he's he's a master on the do, mic. But but, but like the cursing, like all the references, like a lot of that stuff he can't do in WWE. Then they, they will give him a script, I'm, but like they will give him like bullet points or, or, on what to say and he'll fill in the gaps but and the and the yeah. w and the and the WWE audience would think of him as um Miz 2.0 yeah. yeah meanwhile right now WWE has like five of them where they have like Grayson Waller and was, Austin Theory and then like Miz himself and there's like and I, when you wait, add, wait 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 those are young talented young men right now hold on no, wait, no, hold, <laughs> but, but I'm saying, but I'm saying like, when we're talking about like new Miz is like they're in that category oh, but yeah, what, yeah I got you I got you but, but I want to say about MJF like I, I do see a point Jay about like him like being scared or something but it's also I see it as he's aware of the situation because if he were to go to WWE say like, like next year where does he fit in the mix? Because because no, CM no. Punk is back. Like, hold on. We have. But who knew, who knew that was gonna happen though? But we'll get to that. But who the fuck knew that was gonna happen? But I also. So right now with AW, he has the schedule he wants. He's about to be featured in like he's in the he has a credit in the Iron Claw movie, so he's about to do some press for that. Right. And, that, and but back to like with this injury stuff, it would make sense for him to on one night like everything like. Everything shits to bed. He loses the Ring of Honor tag titles. He loses his. He loses the world title, and then saying six months by, like double or nothing. Like he he's all healed up. Hopefully, or by whenever he recovers, 
makes his triumphant return, and then he can kind of pass you a promo about how, like, like that fucking Mark gave me the money, so now I'm here. And yeah. Now I want I want my shit back. I want the triple B. Like the, the promo is there for him when he comes back nah, in 2024. Yeah, nah, yeah, I get it. And 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 I'm not I'm not I'm not upset with it. I'm just saying that like um right now with people's like their their thought process for it to happen, I think that um Tony Khan is gonna sit there and throw him the Brink's truck to get him and to keep him. You hope he did. Yeah, and and that's See, what my thing is like y'all you was know, talking about MJF is probably on one of like his favorite schedules right now. Are you sure Tony is relying so heavy on him? Well, I, mean, so I, I, I would show say... multiple segments constantly. He yeah, you see that MJF. Well, yeah. that's well. That, well, that's what happens when you're over. You get to be used a lot more than a lot of other people. Yeah, and when but, you, and, and, but and when you're a ratings draw, a freaking quote, and you bring in the people and get people's attention, you're gonna be overused a lot. Yeah, but also, when you do that, you oversaturate it if you don't put them in the right reasoning. Because right now, the and story now is, and now he's hurt. A love, a love triangle is crazy. Cause, yeah, you know, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's, a that's exactly what it seems like. No. Yeah, a bromance. Yeah, but not no. a, but but not only that, you have the Samoa Joes targeting him, Warlows coming in. And, <laughs> and, and I get it. It's like the champ is the target. This is it's an old school thought process. But if you I can't wait when the devil's revealed to be Jack you, Perry. If you I can't wait. Oh my god. <laughs> Jay's gonna be so pissed. No, 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 I'm I really would laugh bad. so hard. Because he could debut to a sea of thank you, jungle. <laughs> <laughs> you know, once the, he reveals himself, there's going to be CM Punk chance so, uh, along with it. <laughs> oh, Jesus. The, 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 there's the devil, Jack Perry, along with his new faction of Wardwell, <laughs> Dolph Ziggler, and his brother. And how, and Yo, how, Ryan Nimitz and, and Ziggler. <laughs> and how does, and how would it make sense to anybody? But, uh, it indicates because it won't. <laughs> so, way, let's, he's gonna take, have, he's gonna, have, gonna have the list. he's gonna do, like, it's gonna be like just like this. One. So, let's go into the, uh, Cry Survivor me a river. <laughs> <laughs> you need Jay uh, from like, like 99 when Vince reveals himself as the higher power. Oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, son of a bitch! It's me all along. <laughs> by, by the way, I, I have the tag team list in front of me. So okay, so let, let's go through the PWI tag team list. Uh, we have the um, the uh, uh, tops or whatever you have. So let's go through it. So you want to do the top ten first, and then we'll go uh, to the list. Yeah, let's go through that. So at number ten, we have a tag team called Seven Up. Who the fuck? <laughs> <I have> no idea. <laughs> at, num- at number nine, we have damage control. Um, top ten is kind of crazy. Um, but I'll, 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 t- I'll take it, but that's kind of crazy. But I'm also it. saying it's like it's, it's just stay weird to say like we gotta have females in there. I would have took I would have taken that as a faction, but okay, next up. So, since you mentioned the female thing already, just so you know that at 25 it was Gallus. And then at 24, it was Liv Morgan and Raquel Rodriguez. Fuck I'm about you! To I'm, about, I'm about to leave. What? <laughs> Fuck Liv Morgan God. and over Raquel. Ga- oh, over, over Gallus. Gallus the, coffee, the Coffee Boys and Wolfgang. I'm mad at that 25. Like, what the fuck? Gallus is 25? Like, yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh, number eight was Judgment Day. Um, uh, it should be higher. Yeah. Fine. Number, s- number seven, The Acclaimed. They have fallen yeah, they, way they, off. No. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. 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 I, I can see Last that. year, yes. This year, no. Yeah. Yeah. Number uh, number six, ABC. I, I think that's Chris Bay and Ace Austin from Impact. Okay. Okay. Bang bang. We like them. <laughs> <laughs> number 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 five, the Motor City Machine Guns. Okay. Wow. Yeah, that, that, that's a good pop up for me. I get that. Okay. Number four, Bishimon from New Japan Pro Wrestling. I'm just gonna let them have that one. I'm not going to uh, yeah. respect no yeah. uh, Number three, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. 
Wow. Oh, okay. Wow. But, they get, but they, also, can we really say top three? Yeah, uh, yeah. I I'll, I'll put that. it uh, like top ten, or no, like, maybe like, like outside the t- top ten because really the past year, aside from the WrestleMania stuff, it's really depending on much. how they, they how they 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 broke it down during their, their um scaling of of um uh, yeah, um, it's, but match rankings, like match, yeah. match quality and yeah, yeah. Shit. but also the dating of it so. I think it was uh, just the WrestleMania and the Roman beating Roman moments. Right. Uh, number two, Aussie Open. Times. Times. I already know. Uh-oh. Number one <laughs> Times. So many flags right there. Whoa. Aussie Open is number two. Yeah, and number one is FTR. I'll take that. Where are the Usos? FTR, I give it to them because I'm a fan, Usos. but um, at the same time, they didn't really have a good year. They did not. Um, that's what I'm saying. I it, I, I'm thinking like um, the uh, criteria of the 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 schedule. Um, Dax is not great as a singles that he's been getting fucking Dax has only been squashed a lot of times and um as for the tag team they haven't been looking good in the late the, like the mid to late years so um I'll take it I, because of FTR's um uh, history but I don't so, believe so so I just went over the list and the Usos are not on the list what? Wow! They didn't make the hundred. They uh, they wow. broke up, I guess, but they broke wow. up this year. But it's what the same thing the- to say about FTR, though. The Hardys made the list in '94. Wow! What the fuck? <laughs> Number n- ninety three, the ninety three, the Dark Order. What? what? No, no, no! We got we have to go back to the Hardys. What? They have had. One <laughs> good match this year. What? One. No. And you can barely count it. One. Listen, the only thing I care about is that I know my people's main event made like the 60th or 70th or somewhere in there. Oh, yeah, shout, out to, shout out to main event. They got, uh, number 71. Uh, exactly. And I, and I believe they should have been higher on that list. Uh, Are you fucking kidding me? Number 81, the team that just got recently released by NXT that's doing their indie run right now, Grizzled Young Veterans are on the list. And it should have been higher on the list. They should have been much the, more. The, are, the, are they the Grizzled Young Vets or are they the Schism? The, <laughs> right now, right now they're the Grizzled Young Vets. But uh, okay, it, it, it's like the, the NXT shit was not even good at all. But, and we're um, going to see them this Friday at House of Glory. Shout out. So, so also, R.I.P. Bray Wyatt, but tell me Joe Gacy and Bray Wyatt shouldn't have switched theme songs. Mm. Mm. That could, yeah, that could have been something. Yeah. 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 That could have that could have been something. Watching what, what? Bray Wyatt coming out to some love is blind would have been crazy. <laughs> what, what's, what's a tag team, Mike, that you see like there is like, what the fuck? The magical oh, sugar old. rabbits. <laughs> <laughs> Number thirty-two. That's a real team. Yeah, but, but I'm and they're number thirty-two. Number thirty-two. So Imper- Imper- Imperium is forty-nine. LWO is fifty-one. Oh, I'm I'm leaving. You know what? You know, Alba Fire, oh, Alba Fire, and Isla Dawn are better than the best friends, according to the list. You know what? We don't I mean, need to have this conversation. We're not having yeah. this conversation anymore. So Mike um, Knox <laughs> and Trevor Murdoch are on the list at number sixty-seven. Get the fuck out of here! You know it, where is LAX? Mike Knox is still wrestling. <laughs> yeah, where is the NWA? Where is LAX? Oh. Is LAX on there? <laughs> no. like, Might as well be at this point. The the it's guns, like, the guns, proud were and powerful. The oh, guns, where's the guns uh, at? Twenty-one. Twenty-one. That's kind of low for them, though. That House is of Black and, they're, House they're of Black definitely and better than Aussie. The House, House of Black, Black is what? 19. Okay. How did the House of Black lose to Aussie Open? Well, it's Ooh. because it's because of what you call it. Um, 
They're now called the kings of the whatever the fuck. King, the <laughs> kings the of the black table. throne. Oh no, well, the black, what, black throne. Well, well, this is well, this is well, if I'm reading it right, the House of Black is the trio, so it's <laughs> with Buddy Matthews. But um, sixteen Lucha Bros, fourteen the Rascals, number eleven was the Elite. Boom! Oh, what the, the fuck? fuck out of have here. they done? Get we, the can, fuck out of here. They lose, they lose ratings. Nobody cares about them. Like, what the? They don't even get reactions anymore. <laughs> Listen, I want to find out who the fuck's seven up are because they're apparently one rank higher than the elite. So, whoever they are, good for them. <laughs> Whatever they oh do, my God. Keep, it, keep, it, keep it going. It's like I'm cling, saying. cling. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, New Day got twenty six, so that's who Gallus is better than. Well, they haven't been. No, um, they, they haven't been on TV for long, for too long. So. <laughs> Bang and Matthews. So somebody's out there. Last name is Bang. <laughs> Bang. First Bang or last name. Oh. Street Profits at forty one. Wow. Wow. Well, they were off a of TV Ridiculous. for a minute. For a minute, so. Chelsea Green and Sonya Deville at forty seven. Yeah, I'm leaving. They're better than Imperium, apparently. Uh uh-uh. uh. Not hearing that. This is this this is hilarious. You know what? I thought the individual shit was um last for me. <laughs> this is ridiculous. This is so, ridiculous. But let's go back to number ninety four, the Hardys. Eh, <laughs> uh, you know. They, I mean, one good match this year. <laughs> Oh, wow. one, one a million. Oh, Jesus. Idris Enough and Malik played from NXT or 98. Who? Idris Enough and Malik played. And what was the Brawling oh, Brutes? The two- what was Brutes? The bra- I just saw them, 76. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, this list is all types of dog shit. Like, I quit. <laughs> what the fuck? Wow. Um... Let me um, let's let's move on to the, yeah. This is because that's just, I'm just I you need to see this list. For, you need you need to see this list for these stupid fucking names. Um, <laughs> all right, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, for this, uh, apparently, um, like I said, uh, MJF injured. Uh, how does this um impact the future? And then um. There was a, a story that was just released this on this day was Brian Danielson was part of a, a commission to get CM Punk out of AEW. What the fuck? Yeah, this is not, not really shocked to at me. This. I, I haven't heard that one. What? I'm so, not shocked at this. So, Mike, what's your thoughts about this? It makes sense because considering how close Brian is. Uh, Close to uh, Tony Khan, it would be reasonable that Brian's a part of said committee. I mean, it, it, oh, if he's it's, one of the boys. He's if, definitely it, one of the boys. It, it, I mean, Tony Khan has said publicly, he said, "God forbid, if something happens, um, he wants Brian Danielson to take over the company." So we kn- we know who Tony wants the, co- the company to, to fall fall into their hands, and that's not Kenny Omega or the fucking Young Bucks. So but um, the Paul Levesque is pretty much. I mean, aside from the stupid stuff he, whatever you say about whatever your opinion is on his philosophy on wrestling, like if like with him with his, with his concussions and wanting to bleed, like all the all the other nonsense, do stupid. I hit you, you hit me, bullshit, and call it Japanese strong style. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, for when it comes to like AEW, I mean, Brian mm-hmm. Danielson is one of the guys that's has stepped up as a leader. Some people might laugh at that, but, I mean, when when you have a locker room full of mi- misfits, there's to be somebody in there to saying, hey, I know what's, I know how to make money. I know where we should go as a company. Let's, let's, do, let's, the, let's do this. That's the fucking problem. That's been my biggest disappointment from Brian Danielson since he's got there. He's not going to do that. He's going to go play along with everybody. Yeah. <sighs> You know what? Mm. He wants to go over there and play. Mm. I see that more in Jericho, but I oh, mean, Jericho's over there and he's just having a little bit of the bubbly and fucking gaining weight, losing <laughs> weight. He doesn't know what the fuck he wants to do. <laughs> I mean, shit. 
Nah, I'm like, uh, I I think right now is about who can get in where they could fit in, and in this type of um, environment, when they knew that you could get Punk out, who was supposed to be um, Tony's um, right hand guy, I think Brian was like, "Fuck that! I I, I got to get into that position." And he found a way to make it that way. So, um, see, I but apparently he was already. Picture, in the I position. can't picture that coming from Daniel Bryan's head. Call me the cliche fan, and I still believe. I I just don't see Bryan like that. You just see Bryan with I a big really smile don't. on his face going up to Phil and saying, "Hey, I'm sorry to say this, but we voted in. <laughs> uh, you're, you're fine. <laughs> Have a good well, day." <laughs> but here's my shit. See, but Damn. that's where I see Jericho. But here's he, my he's shit. the one that called Punko cancer and all that. But here, here's the um. But Jericho the, go uh, here, he here, ye. I ain't but Mike, hold on. Is fired. But oh, Mike, hold on. This <laughs> this is my thought about this. How can you be a fucking a a owner, a, an executive, or how the fuck the position that you have in your company to sit there and have your talent justify or judge whether or not a person should be in your company or not. That's At where the end AEW of the day, has me fucked up. And a multi-billion dollar fucking company. Like, are you serious? Like, they, your talent in the fucking locker room are the ones to judge whether or not somebody else... Sure. By the way, uh, you look it up. CM Punk's merchandise in AEW is the most selling ever. So, still, yeah. So, um, and people were buying it now once he was announced to be in WWE because of that. So, yeah. And I understand That's where you guys, and I understand where you guys are coming from, but to play devil's advocate here. Uh, uh, the, maybe Brian Anderson does have more leverage than one of the boys because, like I said, he Tony Khan trusts him a lot more than some other people. Oh, but was it the, was it the same way of people perceived that CM Punk had the same kind of leverage? Yeah, that's what I mean. But yeah, but, uh, but apparently uh, Brian Anderson was higher on the pecking order, especially was towards he? Le- yeah. Was he? Was I, he? I, I mean, the especially, wait, especially, wait, especially wait, the last couple of months. I don't think he was higher Punk on was the pecking order. I don't think he was higher on the pecking order until the situation. Yeah, so, I don't believe that either. I really don't. I don't believe that either. Tony wanted Punk there since the debut of the damn show. He couldn't wait to get his hands on CM Punk. CM Punk is his favorite wrestler. Yeah. Was. Well, was. I don't know yeah. how he feels now t- today. Apparently, but- the Bucks or more of his favorite wrestlers than the than uh CM Punk. <laughs> yeah, he's he's such the a fan one, of Keith. He he's such, he's such a fan of Keith Lee. He's not using them right now. <laughs> so, as I go to the bathroom quick, uh Mike, open up to what occurred on Survivor Series. Oh, I thought we were going to wait till the review. Oh, that's the review. That's what we're doing. That's what we open up to. Oh, so thought we're going to talk about the whole show. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's what we're doing right now. So go ahead, let's oh, so do it. You, you want to go oh, straight? You, you want to go straight? Yes, to, to let's go to the. Yes, go into that. All right, we'll so go straight to women's war games. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess we'll go. I don't know if Jay wants us to do this, but war games did happen on Saturday. Uh, what what did you think overall on the show? Show wise, I mean, AW has like muted me to like. I mean, it made me immune to weapon use a lot, but this was this was nice. This was refreshing, you know, ta- to see actual talented wrestlers not go out there and make a fool of themselves. Mm, I, I see where you're coming from. Because when it comes to WWE, it's rare when they have violence to this level. With AEW, we see it almost every show, every, show. Uh, <laughs> every day of the week. But especially the war games matches, one of those matches where, like as a fan, I'm easily like amused by it. And the concept of it: two rings, one giant cage, bullshit, oh. and, and, and anarchy is going to happen. So, 
when when I mean last year showed a lot of success with the bloodline and that stuff, and then this year they had the Judgment Day and Damage Control basically be the main uh, draws for War Games matches. Right. Do you think? What do you think of the War Games? Like, do you think the, the this year's War Games matches were better than last year's, or on the same level? I'm not gonna say it was better than the last. Maybe the women's were about on par too, and maybe maybe the women's match was better. No, nah, because I think I honestly think damage control should have won. But the men's just that moment between Sammy and Kevin with the breaking up of the pin that you can't beat that. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll go with that one. I, I'll say this one with the men's. It was very entertaining from start to finish. But um, as far as for the women's, they did open the show like they did last year. And I will say, until all eight of them got in the ring, the the it's, it did pick up. Because there was moments where, like, Bailey was climbing the cage trying to get away from Shotzi and Becky. And, like, Shotzi had a chair. And <laughs> she made Hulk Hogan's chair shot all the, the those years ago in WCW look like child's play. Like, they were trying to hold back on their weapon shots. And they tried not to hit her, but they almost hit her. <laughs> but um, every year I'll always pop for the EO Sky putting the garbage can over her head and jumping off the top of the cage. Yeah, she wild for that. Yeah, but um, yeah, the- I, I I I thought the women's match as an opening was a solid opening. Um, and I also think that um, yeah, they were they they had to work on an understanding like we need to be a little bit delicate. Um. A lot of the stuff that they're trying to set up is like kind of sloppy, but once all eight of them got in the ring and they started, yeah, like, yeah, they started the craziness. I mean, when Charlotte Flair hit that moonsault off the top and hit her, and her knee hit Eo Sky right in the head, I thought, oh my god, I thought Eo was about she, to fucking she, die. It's stuff like that that scares me, bro. Like but, the loose but, knees and the elbows, shit like that. Oh my god. But at the same like, time, like all the falling. But at the same time, I can say it's that it's it's not often. It's random because you do it for what you're you do doing. It, you do it. it for a fucking point, a purpose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not you. We we're not doing that shit on Raw and SmackDown. We're doing it where the money's at. So we're, we don't um, do it for the cheap pop. We want the pop to mean something. Right. Exactly. And um, I I I thought for the women's match is it's not their best women's war game match, but I thought it was fun and I thought it was I I I I didn't I I didn't move away and and grab a fucking um a bathroom break. I thought it was a good match. I think looking back on the women's war games, I think a lot of the ones in NXT were very were were much more much more violent and more. Solid from start to finish, but oh, absolutely. But yeah. uh, team Charlotte, Bianca, whoever, whoever, whoever was the team captain, I didn't know going in, but uh, they got the win with the match. And Bailey did eat the pin, so we are teasing. We're probably gonna start leading to ba- Bailey turning or getting kicked out of this group, so yeah. And a lot of people are saying that if they do kick Bailey out of the group by say like the holidays, Bailey could be an early Royal Rumble favorite. She wins the rumble and she challenges EO Sky for the belt of mania. Oh, that, okay, that does, okay. yeah, yeah, that, that that's a good look. That yeah. sounds too fan that sounds too fan fanny for me though. Like too much that sounds like that that sounds too hopeful. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I still don't I still don't trust WWE like that. I I'm sorry. But I, not for nothing, but it actually it, it kind of makes sense though. That actually sounds fun. Oh, for sure. Because right, right now the, to me, the WrestleMania matches could be Bailey and Io for the women's title on SmackDown, Rhea and Becky on Raw for for their belt. Uh, maybe a singles match between Charlotte and Bianca. I, I wouldn't put Jade Cargo in any of these scenarios. Let her stay in. Let her be in NXT. Let her develop like a character and her end ring stuff. Because even at the press scrum, like Triple H said, in, in, in so many words, uh, she's green as goose shit. Yeah. Yeah. He was, he was being Absolutely. nice about it. He, he was being yeah, he, nice he, about he, it. He, he knew what he was getting, he was yeah, getting yeah. when he signed yeah. it. Yeah, he, he, he What he everybody knew. wanted to argue with me on TikTok for, oh, what do you mean? She's been a pro since AEW. Name me one. <laughs> one Jay Cargill match you can go back and watch and enjoy. 
<laughs> Aside from one spot that she did that was very impressive. I'll Thanks. wait. Yeah. Uh, what about but, what about what about the rumors that with the environment and WWE, uh, the 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 climate change that possibly that Mercedes Monet, aka Sasha Banks, might be coming back. What do you think about? What you, Honestly, about you had to see that coming. You what do really you think about that? M2? What you what you think about an M two? Like, come on, bro. The money's over there. The exposure's over there. The star power is over there. You thought she was. You thought Sasha Banks was going to go to AEW. Come Mike, on, bro. Mike, what do you think about this? That what, now, what, what, what do you think about what, what Mike? Think about this: is that if they're going to be building up the fact that um, damage control is going to ha- boot her out, she's going to need a um, a partner. She, she needs a friend. She needs so, her best oh, friend. So why not go with? Why not have the, somebody? The, please get me a box of tissues. So why not we get the the the, the wrestling horseman for WWE, which was the original, which would be Becky, which will be Bailey, yeah. which would be Charlotte, and it'll be Sasha Banks. Sasha yeah. Banks. Yeah, them against the Asians. The wrestling the worst one of them <laughs> all. What? what? It sounds crazy. But wait, it's who's not... the wait? Who's wait? Who's the fourth one? It'd be those four horsemen against Oscar, Io, Kyrie, and who? Dakota's like she's still hurt. Well, she'll come back, but they're, they're looking to see if she comes back during that time. So okay, right. yeah. I mean, once we get to at the end of the show, I wouldn't be fucking surprised at this point. Sasha Banks decided, you know what? I tried the the indie thing. I tried going to Japan. Got got myself hurt. Let me go back. Let me let me get my money and fuck off. No, I think I you know I think I think it it comes to what's more to what we're gonna talk about later on to where it's like Mm. the old man the old Mm. man's not there. Hmm. True. True. Mister Mister Mike, let me ask you a question. Yes. Or not even a question. Rank the four horsewomen best to worst. In my opinion. See this. Yeah. Hmm. WWE's uh, horse women? Yeah, the, uh, the, uh, yeah. Uh, for me, one is Becky, two is Charlotte, two is Charlotte, three Sasha, four Bailey. You have me. You had me. Uh, I would switch Bailey and Sasha. I, think I Sasha was gonna do the same thing. I okay. was gonna say the same thing. I was gonna say the same thing. Because me, honestly, I have not been a fan of uh, recent Bailey, and like a lot of her heel stuff is hit or miss with me. Like when she, I yeah, like, like the feud with Bianca when she kept laughing. I was, I was like, I, I had to turn the TV off. I was like, I can't fucking watch this shit. <laughs> but we move on. We had Guther defend the Intercontinental title against the Miz. Should have been a squash. I match. love this. this it should have been. It should have been a squash match. But the story no. they were telling, the story they were telling was Guther kept looking, telling the Miz. You're not a wrestler. You're a sports entertainer, and you're a good sports entertainer, but you're not a wrestler. So the Miz decided to pull out some wrestling moves, and not for nothing, the Miz, Miz busted his ass in this match. Yeah, Kuro Sam. Oh, God. Kuro, Kuro he, did, he did. He did his shit. He did a fucking hurricane around a DDT. He was doing a lot that of stuff. Uh, but at the end, we had Guto hit him with the, I think the Boston Crab, and the Miz tapped out. Clean. The whole Lion Tamer. He put the knee in the back. I re- yeah yeah he yeah, put the line. that was the greatest shit that you know what's was- crazy about that you know what's crazy about that the, the significance Miz would have won he would have beat Jericho's record exactly well yeah he would have tied it with nine and and kudos to WWE they started referencing um Jericho again because they, they they talk about him as being a nine time champ so. Of Survivor Series, the whole night was a, was a night of references. Michael Cole was on a fucking field day, but um, <laughs> so good through retains. And then next up, we had Dragon Lee against Santos Escobar. That was a Escobar. fun match. Wasn't, wasn't that a fun match? Real life, just woke up the crowd, rejuvenated you. Wait, like because you didn't expect much from. Him, I'm not gonna lie. What you should have. I like the match, no. but if if he would have given them more time, I think it would have like went to that next level. Yeah, oh, but they were it. they they weren't especially for what the story is. But um, I'm just grateful that they didn't put Dragon Lee in his um uncomfortable trunks because his his trunks usually make me um 
be well, that, was on, that was on the main roster. And he knows that camera is, is, is very, <laughs> he knows better. But I will say for a match that was like put on last minute or last minute replacement, they did really good lucha. Dragon League continues to be impressive. Like it was matches with Cedric and Axiom on SmackDown. So I, I thought for Dragon League's Poor first, Cedric. yeah, we should be. I mean, everybody's saying like, "Oh, release him, release him." I mean, not for nothing. Baron Corbin's in fucking NXT, killing it right now, and he's just have a new like renaissance. Let Cedric go back to NXT. Like, let him build That's something down there. Listen, let him, I we say said, that. please sign Cedric for a reason. Yeah. Listen, I say this: if you if you do not find a way to make Santos Escobar your new Eddie Guerrero in one way, shape, or form, you're dropping the ball. You have to. One way, he well, might not well, have. He the, might not have the the the. I thought that would be Dominic. Yeah, I was about to say Dominic's probably the new Eddie Guerrero. No, Dominic. WWE. Dominic. Dominic is more just a just heel kind of uh of persona. I don't think that face wise he works. We've done dance with um Santos as a face and dance with him as a heel, but if you don't play with him as more of an Eddie kind of uh personality, you're gonna drop the ball with him. Honestly, I really think uh, that it. I think it works for him. Yeah. Well, Santos got the win here, and I, as far as Dragon Lee, this was his first main roster WWE uh, PLE pay per view. He looked good. Two two thumbs up. He looked great. Absolutely. This guy. I was thinking about this the other day because WWE for so many years have been trying to find like the next Rey Mysterio. And like you had your failed Sin Cara's, your failed Cabestos. And, 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 and you know, and, and this you know is the they, last chance. And you know what they did? They showcased some promos and fucking backstage interviews that he could speak English. So that's what they're doing. Yeah, they tried the Kalisto and he did a good Lucha yeah. thing and then he got uh, fucked. Uh. <laughs> uh, next up, we had Rhea Ripley against Zoe Stark for the women's world title. Now, yeah. Zoe Stark is good in the ring, but she, like, oh, like everybody was telling me, like, on my, my inner circle, she has no character. She, th- there's nothing to her. <laughs> she's bland as shit. Right. Yeah. She's, she, 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 she's vanilla as shit. And I think that um, she falls into the same category as what um, they put her with um, uh, um, Shayna. In that same kind of realm that mm. she can't translate verbally to people, but if you could give her, a, if you could give her a manager, or you give them a go into the ring, kick ass, bus ass kind of um, type of uh, gimmick, I think they'll work. I think Shayna. Is gonna be the one that gets over better to probably oh, take over um um to take over uh, uh, uh Rhea's title run, but uh still got we still got uh three more Zoe, four, four Zoe, more months to Mania. Yeah, Zoe Zoe ring wise, she's solid, man. That and yeah, there's something about her that needs to fucking um to get it over. I, I don't even think her her, her um, mic work is bad. Yeah, I just, I think, just, they, they I just, just need think to give her time. Yeah, they give her time I, to like actually cut a promo, convince yeah. people why people should care about her. Yeah, yeah. And she, she I, gets um, she gets drafted to Raw. She gets aligned with Trish Stratus, and then though I will say this: the old Trish thing, it was a nice idea to put her with her. But at the end of the day, it really didn't accomplish much. It just got Trish like somewhat more like. Try to get like some heat, but now Zoe Stark is just in this limbo of like if she gets TV time, it's just for her wrestling matches. But as far as like trying to tell me as a fan why I should care about her, there's really no reason to. I actually thought her, um, her face makeup was fucking solid. I thought that shit was legit. I was fun with that. I thought that shit was it was oh, yeah, she, a, a good she over. Look like a beast. Yeah, yeah, what, yeah it, it, you know what I'm saying. And what about uh, Miss Rhea Ripley and her assless chaps? Please, 
<laughs> Yo, listen. <laughs> not fantasize. It is not time to fantasize. <laughs> I sent Jay a clip of like of we are like licking a piece of paper and like selling it online for like a couple bucks. Like five hundred, and Xavier was in the background. What's that? What's that link? <laughs> let me pay yo, for let me, that right now. Yo, <laughs> let me, yo, Rhea has. It's like she's transcending like what women's wrestling is right now, and I'm not mad at her for that. Like she is like she amazing. What, what uh, for? What she's doing? Absolutely. Rhea's, yeah, yeah, and you know, regardless of what position you put her in. The one thing that I can say is that she needs to get RKO'd soon, but we'll talk about that. <laughs> oh, oh, that's definitely was the go- well, nice little segue because yeah. now we're we go into the men's war games match. Uh-oh. Uh, now we had Team Cody versus uh, Team Judgment Day: Cody, Rollins, Sucks. Sammy, Jay Uso, and maybe Randy Orton. Versus Damien Priest, Finn Balor, J.D. McDonough, Dominic Mysterio, and Drew McIntyre. Maybe Ra- maybe Randy Orton, with, but because we weren't sure because, if he's going to yeah. be there, but his yeah, wife was wasn't. live streaming on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. Womp, womp, womp. Thank, you, thank you, Kim. Thank you, Kim. What Tell me Randy and Roman's wives aren't the happiest women on this planet. Yo, let me tell you something. Uh, <laughs> Randy has become. I always thought that he was the angriest one, and I say this on the podcast often. Randy was often a guy that fucking I thought he was gonna be the most angriest of everything when it came to women. But shit, that motherfucker is in love when it comes to Kim. Shout out to Kim. She's a fucking NYC girl, and she nabbed herself a fucking a a whale. Good mm-hmm. for you, girl. There was a recent clip I saw on Instagram where, like, he went to go like, like embrace her in the front row, and he immediately grabs her tit. <laughs> and it's like, it's and with with me, it's like she's like a six degrees of separation of probably being able to talk to him because I know so many people who know her or been connected to her, and it's like, fuck, like, I would love to have her on a podcast, but as for that, um, and yeah, as far as. as, as M2, what on. was your thoughts about? I, I mean, we'll we'll get to the match, but knowing that Randy was in the building, we knew this was gonna happen. Oh, we oh yeah. Oh yeah. So when he didn't come out for the entrances, I was like, oh, he's gonna make a surprise return. And okay, they gonna make us wait. The, the, they 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 went for the big pop, and you know what? That's exactly what they got. Because it could have went bad. If if the man was not there and they were gonna start cheering for another person, well, game. well, but, their th- yeah. their thought their thought was is that they were gonna sit there and say like, um, well, if Randy wasn't in the building, then people CM are Punk, speculate. CM Punk, CM Punk, CM Punk, he was gonna be the fifth member. Yeah. So it was like, yeah. ah. but us as. Jay has no so he just he just spoils everything <laughs> <laughs> like shit. It could have been somebody else, motherfucker. Who me? Yeah. As, as a wrestling aficionado, I was like, that's not gonna fucking happen. We knew that. But uh, Mike, what 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 occurred during this um this this match for um, War Games? So starting from the pre-show, we were we were being told, hey, Randy's not in the building. He's not here yet. So then we had segments like where like Jay and Sammy are like panicking, like, oh shit, if Randy's not here, it's it's my fault because of the bloodlines shit. And then like right before the match like, they came out, like Seth was like screaming at Cody, where the fuck is he? And Cody says, He'll be here, trust me, trust me, and then we go into the match. Um as far as like judgment day in their gear, what'd you guys think? Oh, that like, shit was fire. That shit Probably. was fire. Um, bro, walking out like the squad. <laughs> that's that's Not the true. one thing. That's the one thing to love about Warriors. Like when like, everybody like, like coordinates, like goes with a theme. So we start here with Seth Rollins and Finn Balor. Then everybody comes in one at a time. Um, when Sami Zayn came in, uh, I forget how, like how it was brought up, but Michael Cole goes somewhere. El Generico is very happy about this. <laughs> it's like okay, we're having fun here. 
Uh, the the big part of the match was when Jay got in the cage. Drew McIntyre wanted to get in there right away, but Damian Priest stopped him. He said, "Stick to the plan." Yada yada yada. And then Drew then Drew came in next. He he went from one ring to another just to go straight to Jay Uso, grabbed him by the throat and just said, "All you had to do was apologize," and then beat the ever loving shit out of Jay Uso. <laughs> I just love that that's all Drew wanted. You, you, you should have just said sorry. It's like, oh my God. But, um. Yeah, he's not playing with him. We had Cody come out. We had. But wait, before you continue. Oh. But wait, before you continue. But before, but before you continue. Man. Wow. Watching wrestling. And they're telling a story. And they're telling a story. <laughs> wow! This is not doing spot for fun. It's wow! Not, it's not just a good match. Wow! What? It's not. It, it's not that I'm supposed to know something. Wow! Continue, Mike. <laughs> so, aside from the obligatory CM Punk chance, every time somebody came out of their cage, ran, ran to the ring, they were we want table chance. So the heels would be like, no, no tables, and then. Finally, they were put on the table in the ring. But once Cody got into the ring, all of a sudden, there's a fucking cowbell hanging on the side of the ring in the cage. Yeah, right? And he pulls, pulls that shit from under. And then yeah, somehow, he, him he, and he, Rollins yeah. are holding on to the said like, rope and uh, cowbell. And then they start doing double team spots. And then this was the perfect time for Rollins to go, where the fuck is Randy? <laughs> and they start yelling at each other again, and then the, and then the judgment day judgment day take over. Uh, they, they and I love how the last person they they left before Randy was Dominic Mysterio. Yeah, the fucking heat this got this kid yeah. got. That's what I'm talking about. I loved it. And that's what I'm talking about. It's like they knew they um, know what they're doing. I don't want to do a contrast and compare kind of thing, but. Jesus, would the, would have the, would the old man have done this? No, oh, absolutely no. no, no. Dominic would have started. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Dominic would have been the last one. I mean, like literally the last man surviving. He probably would have won the match. He would have been, the, the, he would have been the, the survivor. <laughs> so we had a spot where um, Rollins, Cody, and uh, Sammy. Uh, I think uh, the three out of the four were laid out. Then we had a moonsault from JD, the coup de gras from Finn, Finn Balor, and then the frog splash from Dominic. And then the countdown starts five, four, three, two, one. And, and then nobody comes out. Then we hear Rhea Ripley's music, and she's running down to the uh, ring with, with the money a... in the bank briefcase. Uh, and I, referee. Love I love oh, it. I love it. I love it. And, and Damian <laughs> Priest goes, Go, go, come on, come on, come on. So the whole tease of Damien's and saying, I and we, I give it to commentary. Plan. I give it to commentary because they sold it to where it was like, you "Oh my god, do this. it's Seth. war games!" And Seth is out. Seth is out. He is so. This doesn't make any sense. Oh, oh yeah, Another no, heist of the century. Oh, yeah, exactly. Jay, thank, Jay, thank you because I forgot they put uh, uh, Damien Priest did the uh, razor's edge to Seth, putting him through a fucking table. And this guy is still suffering from a bad back. Remember, right. everybody. He has tape on his back because he has a bad back. So yeah. Ripley's they're about to ring the bell or do whatever. Then I hear voices in my head plays and the fucking building explodes. Thanks. And then fucking bro. Then out comes Randy Orton in a muscle suit. This my dude, boy. this dude looked so he, jacked. It's my, it's my boo. Listen. I sat there and I clutched my pearls. I, I clutched months away. He got big. I clutched my I pearls did. and I said, "Hey!" <laughs> as, 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 Look who's as, coming as, to the ring! Hey! My God! They already. As Randy said on Monday, "Daddy's back." <laughs> Damn, you, Zaddy! The first he said, "Damn, Zaddy, I got you." <laughs> I remember when the first time he returned in like 2008, 2009 when he it was like during that time when he came with all the tattoos, I was like holy shit. <laughs> I felt the same way when he came up tonight. I was like, damn Zaddy. He, 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 looked, he, looked, he was fucking jacked. He looked and, you know tan. Was, and it was crazy when he went into the ring, he fucking tore it up, bro. 
Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. the best thing was he so he goes he gets in the ring, he waits for JD and Dominic to run at him, and he does the signature um uh power slam and then he does the draping DDT uh, and then and then all five of them get each each person from yeah. the opposite team into the draping DDT spot. And this is where I have to give a thumbs down to Michael Cole because he fucking goes after all of them hit the draping DDT. He goes vintage war games. <laughs> like, my oh god. my god! Since god when did war would. games do they do that? He was excited. <laughs> yeah, get, give him, get, get, just give him a pass. So, so, so they do the spot, and then Randy Orton takes, like, he looks over to his left. He sees Jay Uso, and he goes, "Wait a minute, you tried to fucking kill me eighteen yeah. months ago." I like so that. Then, so, so uh, I loved how Jay was also like Randy, like, like trying, like, like, like we're, we're cool, like, we're on the same team here. And then you had Randy <laughs> do the moment go. I remember, I I haven't forgotten. And as soon as he says that, uh, Jay Uso hit a <laughs> super kick out of nowhere to I think like like JD McDonough. So then we we get to the we get into the end. Well, wait, here. Mike, hold on, Mike, Mike, hold on. Yes, and. When was the last time? The last time in it probably a long time that you've ever seen storytelling like this in fucking WWE. Like, when the fuck have you seen this? Last year's War Games. Yeah, with the bloodline. You can't oh, tell right. me that. You can't oh, tell I, me I, when I, Sammy you know, broke up that. Well, when you know, Sammy you know, broke you, up that pin. Yeah, I forgot. When Kevin yeah. Owens was about to pin Roman and Sammy broke it up, your heart. Yeah, Sammy, Sammy yeah. grabbed the referee's arm like, "No, don't do it." Oh, I forgot. <laughs> right. Yeah, you're right. Triple H. Uh, yes. Yeah, Triple H. Triple that, H. Was that involved. one. Oh, yeah, that would hurt my heart. Yeah, Vince. I forgot. Triple H was involved with that. It wasn't Vince. Yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> also, also, even from this past Rumble where you had Sammy take the chair away from Roman. Yeah, that was. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The, the, So we get to the finish. Now I'll say this. When JD started climbing, I didn't. Now they emphasized if anybody escapes from the cage, the team is disqualified. They lose. So yeah. Oh, Sam- oh I, I did not know fuck, that. Wait, 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 wait. Then why the fuck can they get weapons? No, they got. Well, no, they no, got, no, no, no. You can't leave the ring. You can't go over the top. Yeah, you can't. If, go if you over go over the top, top yeah. and leave, your team automatically loses. Oh, I did not uh, know that, sir. I did not know I that, never, sir. It, it, that it, it counts as a forfeit. Oh, okay. So JD was climbing for I don't know what reason. Uh, no, because uh, I think he wanted to forfeit. Well, well, everybody was knocked out at this point, and JD realized, oh shit, I'm about to die. So he tries to escape. We had Sammy and Seth stop him at the top, and then conveniently, there's a platform for JD to stand on. <laughs> and then you have Seth and Sammy push him off, and Randy and he falls just perfectly face first. It's That's an RKO out of nowhere. And then you have Cody hit the uh, crossroads on Damian that Priest. Shit was, although it was, you saw that it was set, that it was a, a, a um, there was a platform, planted, and it was planted, but it was beautiful. It yeah. was a beautiful. The, ti- the timing was perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was. was. Yeah. So then Cody hits the crossroads and he pins Damian Priest. Now going into the show, they were go, they were saying Damian Priest is the leader. He's the captain. And he took the pin here, so more just more teasing for the eventual kick out of Damian Priest on the Judgment Day. So, baby faces win. They all celebrate. They have, and then in the right, in the right side of the corner, the copyright copyright pops oh, up, right. and they do a wide shot, and then <laughs> you hear that. <laughs> Who did that? Who did that? <laughs> no, I was thinking about this. I don't know. I who, wasn't... who did that? Was that you? M2, you did that? that? that yeah, me. sure. That was cool as shit. <laughs> now, now, this is what... It's perfect that I'm talking with you two guys about this because I was thinking about this afterwards. Like, wrestling... In wrestling, there's certain things that make the crowd pop. So, when the glass shatters, Alc walks stone cold. Like, when right. you hear... If you smell the rock no, comes out, You hear the gong... Triple A or the right. Undertaker uh, comes out when the yeah. fucking static uh, hits. <laughs> this building went nuts. Okay, the, the, right. the Titan Tron right. said right. CM Punk, and then out walks CM Punk. Okay, wait, wait. I, Looking I, I, bigger than okay. ever. Right. This, this is a conversation that that, that uh, I, I I have to take over. So M two, 
So was, did you watch this live? I, I couldn't. I was at, I was literally oh, at miss, work, bro. Okay, 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 okay. So you I was had got, this live. Okay, uh, so wait, wait, wait. So, so you had uh, gotten the um, stories afterwards. So you, you, you. I didn't you, believe it. I was you at had, work. We were getting orders, and we had believe it or not, there's an actual wrestling fan I work with. I was like, oh, she actually watches wrestling. Right, and we were we were talking, and I was like, "Be real." Did Punk show up? She was. Do you want the real answer? Or do you want the fake answer? She said, "Give me the fake answer." She said, "No." My mouth dropped. <laughs> I threw the trash <laughs> down. Threw wow. the burgers down. Threw threw everybody orders. Had to wait. I went straight to my phone. No way. Yep. No. I immediately way. checked Twitter. <laughs> so, Mike, where were where were you at when 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 this happened? I was. Watching it in my room, all of a sudden I'm about to I wait for the press conference. I look away for one second, and then I hear the fucking static. My head like, like <laughs> swivels so hard, I almost broke my neck. <laughs> and I okay. go, wait a minute, <laughs> no way. <laughs> and then out walks fucking CM Punk in his nice so, new haircut <laughs> in a white t-shirt. So I um You're big as fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so, not really. Every, no, no. No, he looks, no, 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 no. He, he's the, bigger he, than he was before. Yeah. Like popularity? Not, no, he wasn't bigger than Orton. He wasn't bigger than no, Orton. No, no, no. no. But, I'm talking about body-wise. Body-wise. Uh, his yeah, yeah, but yeah. He, he bulked know. up a little bit. He bulked up a little bit. He looked a little swole. I, so, I did. That wasn't the first thing I noticed. I noticed the hair. I was like, oh, nice new haircut. <laughs> nice new haircut, Phil. Definitely. De- definitely the haircut and the white shirt were the most notable, noticeable parts. So, so I, I, I'm gonna give me I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a, a pre-story. So what happened? I, I was um I was hanging out with our boy Oski. Shout out to our boy. Um he he came to check us from Florida and shit. And we were at the bar chilling, talking about it. He's, he looks at me and he goes, do you think Punk is going to show up at Survivor Series? I was like, dude, I've been talking about it for the podcast for the longest. If he doesn't show up with the teasers that's been going on with WWE, <laughs> with the fucking, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the, 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 the news stories of uh, possibilities that is there, WWE is going to fucking lose out on a big opportunity to make fucking money and they're going to burn out shit and the crowd is going to turn. Hold on. Can I, can I just interrupt you for one second? Yeah. Uh, let's, uh, like right now, at this moment... And, time, we talk, and we talked about it on the show for a couple of weeks, right? No, yeah, even I told you, I was like, don't fucking will into existence because every time you say something on the show, it always comes fucking true. So what did I say? You, what said, did you, I said, say? you, you, you said last week when we did the fucking predictions, oh, guess what? Phil, CM Punk's going to show up and I go, nah, nah, nah. And then, <laughs> I, boom, I, I, there I he is. <clears throat> my, my, I was with Mike. I ain't going to lie. There was, I was like, there's no fucking way. But, so, when, but, but hold on, I want to say this before you continue that does CM Punk need WWE? Or do, does WWE need CM Punk right now? Okay, all right, probably so not. I, I, doing I'll, get, this, I'll get to it's that. added bonus. I'll get to that in a sec. So, what when, when I was talking to, to, to Oski and he says, um, What's your thoughts about it happening? And I said, I'm going to be honest with you with my thought of what it is right, of what it is right now. For Survivor Series, I don't see it happening because I don't see that it's needed because you got Randy coming back and the buildup is there. And I really believe that maybe down the line for Rumble, it might make a little, a little bit more sense. But I don't really believe that um, it's that belief that they need Punk as it was before. And Olski looked to me and he goes, you a big punk fan. Are you only saying that because you don't believe it's going to happen because it, it's going to break your heart when yeah, it doesn't I was about happen? To say, you, you don't want your fucking heart broken. And again, I went, and I go, yes. Absolutely. <laughs> like, yes. I'm like, yes. But fast forward to that Saturday when it occurred, when the whole um, event occurred. 
I was getting hit up for the longest where people was like, um, do you, do, is it going to happen? Is it going to happen? And I'm like, well, you know, I don't see it. I, I, I don't see when can it occur. I was waiting for maybe the Nakamura stuff. I, I don't see it. That, that's when what it I was waiting on. Right. And then I was going, um, <clears throat> well, like I mentioned earlier, it might be better if it happened at at Rumble, if it would happen. And it's so quick for it to happen that I didn't think that they can have this going on. And at the yeah. end of the day, uh, Mike, mm -hmm. you could you could um, and because you share stories or whatever with um with with these so called insiders. In which yeah, I laugh yeah, at. Yeah, and I got yelled at for it. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I share I, I share people like, like like sharing like their opinion of, of the news story, and I got yelled at. You stupid motherfucker! The, the not real sources. Like okay, okay, shit. But, <laughs> but yeah, go on. So I um. I, so do you I, want me to get into? Want me to get into what like what happened when CM Punk came out? <laughs> like how no. in, the, in the ring reacted. No, no. Oh my God! We're gonna get to that. So, okay. and I, I'm not and and this is why I laugh at and they, when when it comes to um uh, um people who are in the know, you don't know shit. You <laughs> you're fucking getting worked. You're getting worked. Everybody's getting yeah. fucking worked like and a mug. And it's the greatest thing because in wrestling, that's what you're supposed to be. You're supposed to be getting fucking work when it comes to the idea of legitimate um, wrestling <laughs> reporters or media. Get the fuck out of here. They're working you. And WWE did the biggest work that they did on y'all motherfuckers ever. Ever. And I sat there in my fucking mm -hmm. um, uh, makeshift reclining chair. Would you call this a work, though? Of course it is. Just Why because not? the man, just the man, because because the man made a surprise return after ten years. The work was that nobody thought that it can happen. Okay. The mm -hmm. work was that with. This this was gonna be the most impossible thing on God's green earth. That and this the is, this is on par with Stone Cold took his ball and went home and the Ultimate Warrior. Mm. Yeah, I was about to say because like over the years we've we've seen Triple H men fences with Vince about with the Warrior Bruno, like we've seen all of that stuff. But when uh, for years, all so many years for when it came to CM Punk, nope. He's never coming back. He's he's gonna never return to WWE. He's gonna avoid it like the fucking plague. Uh, I'll be right back, gentlemen. Yeah, right. yeah, 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 do you? The biggest work was that Punk worked us. Punk was the one that worked us because he sat there and gave us the idea that he would never come to come back to WWE, but. In the back of his pocket was that the availability was there for him to do it. It was there. He worked us to do that. Also, the timing of this whole situation, too, when he got fired back in August, and then if Tony Khan gave him a non-compete, the non-compete expired until this point. Just, he was free to sign wherever he wanted to. But with all that, it's also... You look at it. What makes better sense for him? I'm talking about Punk and the business in WWE. It's Punk has never been as hot as he is this past three years. I mean, yeah, since the pandemic, he's this, he's been the most talked about person in, in for, forever. And why not grab that? Before um, it fizzles out, he has made a polarizing aspect to wrestling that people would not even fucking imagine this day and age. 
Yeah. When it comes to wrestling. Yeah, I saw so, like a, I saw like a number too like from my like, like the Twitter stats that like like when he, from when he returned at Rampage the last dance for AEW it was like 131,000 to his WWE one where it was like 230 something. I never really asked you. Are you a CM Punk man? See, here's the thing. I don't know how to feel about him because it's like as, as like a wrestler and on screen like personality, I appreciate all the work he does. He does. But when it comes to like his out, like who he is, who, who I think he is, or what I'm told he is, I don't know how to feel about him. So with him back in WWE, it's like because I mean, like I, like you, I immediately thought of the dream matches. I was like, I was like, CM Punk versus AJ Styles, CM Punk versus Kevin Owens, CM Punk versus Sami Zayn, CM Punk versus Gunther. Like all those matches sound very appealing to me. And, right. even, and the guy that buys the game every year, I'm like. Oh, holy shit, I can't wait for it to get the DLC because he will more than likely be the DLC bonus character for the next year's game. Right. And, so, and what other persona that you could do that with? Nobody, not really, not, not, not anybody anymore. Yeah. CM, Punk, CM Punk still has that special aura about him where wherever he goes or whatever he does, it it draws attention to it. And and I would I would only hope that I could have that kind of of uh, 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 persona that could be translated in the world of whatever I am in because where else can you sit there and believe that uh once the music hits that the crowd. And I guarantee you, even if it wasn't Chicago, Chicago was the perfect fit because of how it, it transcended and how it, it manifests, uh, what it, what what happened. But you could you could have done that shit in SmackDown next week in Brooklyn. You know exactly. what I mean? Exactly. And it and would have still. Can I just point out? CM Punk has the power to get Cena booed in Boston. Yeah. <laughs> everybody everybody does though. Okay, that is true. Yeah. But we were talking about like at the end of the day, it's like punk takes everybody in wrestling to another level because he's so multifaceted in the business. It's you could put him on commentary. You could put him as a manager. You could put him as an in-ring performer. You could put him as a, a, a sponsorship. He's so multifaceted with with how he is. You're going to love See, or fucking hate him. I never said this because I never wanted to sound like just a fanboy or whatever. But you can honestly say Punk is could be the greatest of my generation. For your generation, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Because no, I'm not going to say of all time, but my generation-wise, who can really, even even Cena, who mm. were you growing up watching 2011 on up, or 2010, even even Punk with hair? Nah, screw it, when he cut his hair. Who was better? Between, between, be, be, moments, between who, Punk and Cena? Yeah. Uh, like, yeah, punk. between from 2011 on to 2014, who was more important? Okay, 2013, because that's when they killed him. Mm. But even so, it's like for the past, um, shit, was it three and a half, four years, whatever it is, we can look at, um, when he came to AEW until now, it's like just for that window. Why would we give a fuck about him? Why? Why would we care? Because he knows that we know that every time he goes into a ring, regardless of what it is, he fucking shows out. Absolutely. He shows out. Yeah, but can I also point out too, like until like, the, like until AEW even like started up, this man was doing like interviews saying like he's done with wrestling. Like he was like, like he was like uh, burnt out. Like he wasn't. Like he didn't want to be a wrestler anymore until, 
I guess he said like when he saw the Brody Lee tribute show and he saw like how what much like when he saw like how that locker room or how like how much of a family he saw the whole AEW was, he goes, I need to be a part of that. So that was probably his and initial. He learned that that, fam- that family had a couple skeletons. Yeah, before. yeah, yeah. He he learned the hard way, or what, whatever the hell happened with him at AEW, because all that is still messy and, as shit. With too many yeah. stories, or like, it's like two like two different sides of the of the whole thing. But for him showing up on Saturday, now there's going to be people that say, "Oh, what a fucking hypocrite!" He said he was never coming back. Well, you know what? He came back, and you know what? On Monday, he did say, "I'm back and I want to make money." That's the that was the real CM Punk that just said like he got that five minute promo on Raw, but the, the last like what like two seconds once he dropped the mic and talked to the camera, that could be you could look at that and say that's the real Phil Brooks. I'm back because I, I want to make money. I, I I and a lot of people they were talking about um the promo he did on on Raw and um. I wish I could I could share it bigger, but I don't want to get a copy stripe for it. But it's it pretty was, much it, 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 was, it was almost a copy paste of when he came back for yeah. to AEW. Except to, you, except instead of like seven, it's ten years. But you know what? At the same time, it's um I I, I didn't think it was bad. I thought it was him, um, giving a um, template. Of what he can or cannot say, and um, I think right now I think that um, creatively they told him it was go out there and just talk. But genuinely, if you listen to his promo, I think he was the most nervous that you have probably have ever seen him. Oh yeah, most definitely. It's been ten years. Well, that, but yeah. also he, he's back in an environment where like, he's under the microscope again, where they're gonna right. be like, like, don't say something out of turn, like you know what, not, what to, what to say and not to say, right? You know, so and whatever the hell is going on with AEW, this fight's in the A's where he can't mention anything or whatever the hell's going on. And I understand that, and I get it because it's <clears throat> um, people was like he's pandering to the audience, but I also would say that no, I think he was. Um, trying to, as a performer, get into a feel of coming back to an environment that he hadn't seen in that long. So when it came to his um, promo, it was more along, along the line to was like, he was happy. But you know he's scared or nervous to 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 get off what he really wants to. Give him a couple of weeks. Oh yeah, he's gonna go back to normal. He's go, he's gonna he's he's gonna he's gonna get crazy. I mean, the, I, am I the am I the only one that during the promo I just wanted Seth Rollins to come out and be like, "Fuck you." I was waiting for somebody to. Cut. I mean, also let's like, during the promo too. Like he had the like people like. Like silent and like the, I was I wouldn't say silent, but they were listening to what he was saying, and there was in the the point in the promo where he said like a lot of people in the back like me and some people don't, and then some people started uh, started singing South Rollins theme song. What was like, your thoughts? Like, like, like they try to get that. I started. heard that. I heard that. What was your thoughts about? What was your thoughts about the um did the aftercut where he didn't say it on mic, but but he said it. Off mic, and it was picked up where he says, "I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to make money." Mike, what you talking about? Like, like I said, that 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 was the real. That was probably the most real CM Punk. Like that's legit the reason why he is back. Because whatever we like, like, because Jay, you are a big CM Punk fan. We may disagree on a lot of stuff he did AEW or didn't do, but. He needs this run in WWE to like rehab what he did in AEW, because when AEW he went out with a fucking whimper he, like, in a in a blaze of like in a blaze of fire that was under his control or not, whatever he started or didn't. But this is just a rehab CM Punk's reputation in a lot of people's eyes because people look at him as 
a fucking hothead who doesn't know how to work with anybody and is willing to. Just, it just it just does whatever he wants. Uh, half half the people, some of the other half know what what's up. No, yeah, I know, but I'm saying I just I'm saying for certain people that's the perception of CM Punk, but for for CM Punk, if for him personally, if he because he also said I have changed in the last couple of years. All right, let's see. <laughs> He said, "I've changed in ten years. I've changed. In, oh, said, you've definitely changed." No, he it's it's changes his thoughts about what he had had in ten years, which is bullshit. I know he's fucking bullshitting. I know that. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's just about money, and I don't know what the fuck right. what it is. I, it, I honest, I can honestly say I don't think it's all about money. I just think he wants to leave the right type of legacy. Exactly. But but also, he's, if, also if Ada. Yeah, but no, I'm, I'm, but I'm saying, but at the end of the day, and M2 would fucking agree to this is like, can I make money with the fucking idiots and childish ways that I'm dealing with at the prior place? Or yeah, can it, I it, make it, real money at the place that I know that I don't have to do what it, I, they wanted me to do at the other place? It's like, if the reports are, a, if the reports a, are true, is, then yeah. AEW is not hard to make. You can make bank. The Bucks yeah. are the highest paid tag team. Yes. Like, come on. It's not hard to make money in AEW, but sometimes pride got to take over. And I don't want this to be my legacy. Right. That, that's what I was trying to say before. It's all, it's all about pride and uh, all about this man's legacy. And I... I do want. I, I don't know if you're going to wrap up. I do want to mention. So when Punk did come out, there was a lot of different reactions from a lot of people in the ring. Where like, like the report that Drew McIntyre, like once the match was over, he like he left the ring, went to the back, grabbed his hoodie, and just left the building. That oh, was not really. That, but that was not really. That, that's Punk. kid. I don't buy that. I don't buy any of that shit. That I don't buy. In the ring. Seth, I, I believe I don't a lot of that shit was he, work. But no, but that no, that's, I think but, but that's true. Seth though. can't wait to work with him. I think Drew can't wait to work with him. Yeah, exactly. I, they, oh, no, they, no, no, I no. can't wait for Kevin Owens and CM Punk. That's gonna be crazy. Uh, no, <laughs> no, but hold on, hold on. I'm saying, but the whole Drew thing, mm-hmm. it's, it's it's then report. It's reported that that it's not CM Punk related. It's something else that happened in the match that he was not happy about. That he decided just to leave the building. He left the ring right away. That that well, that's, yeah. that that's separate from this. But, yeah, yeah, that's uh, he lost. He he lost the match, so he should well, walk out of the, the ring. No, upset. no, I'm saying something, Jay. Something happened in the match oh. that he was not happy about, and he just said, "Like I'm, I'm okay." As soon as the, the bell rings, I'm getting up and leaving. Like, he didn't okay, even stay for the whole mouth. thing, basically. But the whole, but then the most important person's reaction was Seth Rollins, who at this point is outside the ring. Being held back by Michael Cole and Corey Graves, screaming, "Get that motherfucker out of here! I don't want him. Any, I don't want him here." Highlight of that video is and Randy then, and, and Jay vibing in the background. No, the best was Randy. Like, he was waving the punk, and punk waved back high, and then Randy like pointed to his wrist, like, "Like, hurry up! I want to go home." <laughs> what? 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 Which was there? There was another video of um, Rhea Ripley. Throwing up the middle finger when it happened, all that shit. And yeah. you know what I say to all that? It's a fucking work. It's a fucking work. Hell Let me tell yeah. you something. I don't buy none of that shit. You do not believe that. You cannot believe. With a different environment that he's coming into, that you will not want to make money with fucking. CM Punk this motherfucking pushes merch he pushes fucking advertisements he pushes fucking looks to everything that you do you did the Seth thing I, he, months months ago he he was he, he talked about the possibility of uh, Punk he said, coming to WWE. He, he said Punk's a cancer stay away and yep. don't you think he was ready? Uh, all right, here's something that you know, and and this is something that off the top that might fucking be crazy, which I said that like, would be legitimate for WWE. Wouldn't it be fucking ridiculous that P- 
Punk comes into the, into the company and knowing that Seth has heat with him and that mm, Seth loses the belt because of a set uh, a CM Punk interference or something and then fucking Damien cashes in and wins the belt because mm. of Punk which leads mm. into a fucking WrestleMania match. I mean, I think can we all agree here that WrestleMania night one it's gonna be Rollins and Punk in the main event. Absolutely. Yeah, but wouldn't wouldn't it be fun yeah, if Randy that and was Roman the next night? Wouldn't it be fun if that's how I, it I, I don't agree with that one. I am saying Cody and Roman. But okay. We'll cross that. Let me say this. Let me say this right now. Go. If Cody wins this Royal Rumble, he's getting booed out the building. Mm. But I, I hope he doesn't win the Rumble, but we'll we'll cross that bridge when we get to, to the Rumble time. But I'm just saying, I'm just saying, Punk comes in, makes a big interference for Rollins match, whoever he has, mm. and Damien cashes in and wins the 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 championship belt, and we get a CM Punk. Seth Rollins match in Mania. Mm-hmm. There's no. It, that's what the money all. That that's the payoff is that. Yeah. Like absolute please, because I don't want Punk to beat Rollins for the title. That's poison. No. The, the, gonna, that 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 be, I can agree with. It, 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 it would it would Punk, be bad if, in six Punk, months span. Punk gets he, the world title as soon as he comes Punk back. Punk is going to yeah, be don't, please your. Don't. Punk is going to be your new Brock Lesnar, people. So he just, he's going to drop in and be that kind of guy. I don't think. Well, well, I'll say this. I, I think from, from what I from what the stories say is that he has a long, a long, uh, const, uh, cont, um, contractual, um, yeah, three years. I guess he has three year deal. Three to five that I heard. Yeah. So and I, th- I think his schedule. I think his schedule is supposed to be designed like edges. Like he'll come in from time to time, a couple months, and then exactly. he takes some time off. Exactly. So now I don't know what about the Saudi shows if he's going to do those. But uh, as as far as like, I'm fine with him having the edge schedule. So if he's going to be around for six months and then say like take off like say two months and then come back by SummerSlam, I'll be fine with that. So Hell yeah. let me ask as, you as, as long as they don't overuse him because this guy he, he's getting older and he is he, getting. He's, I hate to say it, he's somewhat fragile because the last two times he got hurt, it was like back to back. But look how he got yeah, fragile. Yeah. He, he jumped into a fucking crowd and broke his fucking whatever. I almost got scared because when he got close to the fans, I was thinking, this motherfucker's about to try and die. No. He's going to try and jump. <laughs> they, <laughs> listen, listen. I'm sitting here on, on a pedestal going, you're blushing. I can, I can see it in your fucking face. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and still, your fucking but, booze back. But it's also it's it's also for my for for my 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 belief is that listen, this is what business is. It's what what wrestling is. So what I want to do for um the next episode, I want you guys to um uh, put together a, a, a compilation. The miss opportunity, the the opportunities that um AEW should have had with um with Punk, what matches should have happened, what um what what was I, 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 I can name all, one right off the top. No, of no, 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 we ain't gonna yeah. do that. It's the I, easy, it's the easiest uh, thing. They, uh, they not, they not, but uh, save it for next sure. episode. But um. So overall thoughts on Survivor Series and the return of CM Punk is a fucking five thumbs up. <laughs> a, I, gi- um, a giant thumbs up. No, um, before the, the before I um <clears throat> um pop, I, I was popping like a mark when it happened when the the, the theme music happened. I thought the um Survivor Series was enjoyable. I thought it was a fun night. I thought it was good. Uh, it was a good. Uh, Really, um, uh, uh, um, easy watch. Not only oh, that, yeah. but I thought it was it it was a pay per view that people 
who were not wrestling fans should watch. The only match that I was kind of on the on a spectrum for was the intercontinental uh, the intercontinental match uh, because what. I, yeah, because I thought it should have been a squash, and I thought it would it would have benefited Miz more. But this is um, like, what Miz, What better Miz match has there been in his whole um, career? Every one that he defended a title with, but um, whoa! I mean, going yeah. into this, I go into this show. The Miz has, has like the the worst uh, win loss record, but I. That's, I thought that whoa, I really whoa, thought it should have been a squash because I thought the longer story would have been for him. Mm. Wait, you said anyone you're gonna tell me him and Ziggler was a good match. What do you know? Dim when everybody knew damn well Ziggler wasn't gonna lose. He, he wasn't gonna retire. With, but, exactly. Like what? What but what it, he had a good match with Cesaro or some shit? But they were good matches. But they were good matches. They weren't like this. They weren't this. Yeah. They they were nowhere near this. I I really believe that fucking Guta should have fucking squashed him in less than a minute. And then it would have been a better storyline. But it was the shit he was doing. It wasn't like he was out wrestling Gunther. He was doing cheap shit. And he almost got one over on Gunther. And, yeah. he, and, and, and he was trying to prove Groot to the point that he's not just a sports entertainer. He's tr- he he says he's a wrestler. So, yeah. and I think that and I, and I think that, that was the I, point of the, that was the point of the match. And I think that's what what um what what Mike said is that that would have been a better reason that he squashed him, and then it, it would have well, been um displayed on a letter uh on a ladder match that had happened. Well, listen. At the end of the day, Guter should, Jad Gable should be the one beating Guter for the Intercontinental Title. Uh, 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 at wait. least for me, unless you have like Jay Uso or Sami Zayn be the one to do it, that's fine. It, but it's got to be somebody a, new. He's already lost. Yeah, but, like, what's the point? Well, they could go back to that story of Jad Gable, but th- that's just me or some other people. But I mean, Guter's once he drops this Intercontinental Title, that World Title is going to be on him any day. By by next Please. year, Please. yeah. Um, the I think what they're looking forward to with the um the the IC title is because you got to put Gunther uh in line for um what's next and who's having it. Um, and I think that Gunther's gonna have that belt for. Until maybe WrestleMania, so yeah, because now with Punk back, like you could have said, like, we could have easily said, "Oh, Gunther is a favorite to win the Rumble now." Right, right, right now, it's, the men's Rumble winner is up in the air because, God forbid, Real it, life. It, it could be fucking CM Punk winning the Royal Rumble, him and then challenging it Seth Rollins. Be, could be Orton at this point, right? Orton. So, um, Sami Zayn, maybe I don't know. It could be anybody. Now, now it's just about who who. Like he has said, is like, I don't have to fucking um, ask for somebody. They got to fucking come to me because I'm the champ. So come to me. So who's going to be the one that who's going to be on that table to get that title? Yeah. Um, that story is interesting. Also, with, with Logan Paul with the U.S. title, he's coming back on Friday to, in Brooklyn. That story is going to be like a lot of stuff going into oh. wrestling. With WrestleMania around the corner, it's safe to say like the matches. You can agree. Or, like, I don't know if you guys want to agree or disagree, but the matches are easily Jay versus Jimmy, Rollins that, and Punk. That's that's a WrestleMania match. Rollins Absolutely. and Punk. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Becky and Rhea. Mm-hmm. More than likely Bailey and EO. Well, uh, I don't think maybe or, or whoever, and then like Roman and Cody or. Yeah, it, has to, it should be Roman and Cody. The, 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 the story there, with, there, there the, with Cody needs to end at WrestleMania 40. It needs to be... Oh, this reign of Roman has to end at WrestleMania. Yeah, yeah. It will, uh, we nah, already know. I heard they want Randy to beat Roman before WrestleMania, and they want to do Randy and Cody. Well, mm. with, Randy, with Randy's promo, with him saying that he's not finished with the bullet, I could see Randy being Roman's challenger at the Rumble. Well, yeah. we have to get a, a story for Randy for the next couple of months to make it like to make it seem more. This um, Derek shot last night. I, I was going to say but, Dominic at WrestleMania. 
But we we have a lot of other players in the mix. Like you know, we have Owens on one side, we have um um uh, Sammy on the other side. Imagine Ran- imagine Randy Orton versus Gunther at WrestleMania. Like, this is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. There's a lot of um. There's a lot of uh, a lot of um inter inter uh, uh, storylines that should and possibilities that should be in play. So um, we should get it. Twenty twenty four is going to be an interesting year with WWE and their booking and a lot of their match uh, matchups because they're doing a lot of PLEs outside of the U.S. in France, Berlin, and like in the Saudi in the Saudi shows. So I expect a lot of big matchups. But uh. I I think that with WWE right now, it's just like I I can see why uh, people were early on uh, um, judgmental about what could happen. But uh, right now, they get, they're they're coming back. They started to see it, uh, just like with, with with the shows. So, uh, Mike, where can they get you, and where can they find you? Uh, you can find me at m underscore Santino five thirty on Twitter and Instagram, and to follow the Termical Tabloid social is at Termical Tab on Instagram and Twitter as well. My brother M two, where they can find you at, sir? And give me Marquise Maverick on TikTok at Reality of Wrestling, where we just talk about wrestling. YouTube channel Two K and Politics. I am off for the next two days. If it kills me. We are going to talk about the four, top fourteen traditional Survivor Series matches. Not now that they're, we've tra- just transitioned into War Games, we can't forget about the traditional five on five tag team matches. In some cases, four on four. All right, brother, and thank you, Mike. Thank you, my fan, for checking in, and uh, we're gonna holler at you guys later on. Thanks again for you guys for your time. See you guys. Yes, sir. <laughs>